let's talk the ultimate topic in dentistry, uh, uh, Dr. Jones. Let's talk brushing and flossing. Uh, Absolutely. Do you have any recommendation there? For instance, I mean, you know, we have soft brushes and we have um, uh, uh, tough, hard ones. We have um, electric brushes, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, is there anything uh, people, you know, we have how to brush? I mean, there's still, you know, some people say this way, some people say that way, some people say the other way around. I mean, they're or the oval way, the rotating way, um, you know, and again, uh, it, it just give us a good, I mean, I know this is a topic which, Everybody here is in high school, I mean, actually in preschool, but uh, uh, what do you think uh, we need to know? Where are we falling short, if you could give us some advice there? It's interesting that you bring that up, because in our practice, whenever we see somebody new that doesn't know about our philosophy of brushing and flossing, we show them a short video that talks exactly about brushing and flossing, the kind of brush to use, the kind of floss to use, how to hold the floss, um, all of these things. And for most people, as you say, it's a review from our high school health class. Uh, but, but invariably, people will tell me that they've picked up a point or two that they've either forgotten or never heard. But my opinion is that teeth should be brushed one at a time. Um, most people get into the habit of brushing the side of their teeth for uh, and brushing four or five teeth in a in a in a very big stroke, almost like the shoe shine um, person would shine a pair of shoes, and that's the incorrect way. That's going to lead to problems down the road. So if you think of brushing your teeth in a gentle but thorough manner and brushing them one at a time, holding the bristles of a soft toothbrush toward the gum line as you brush, um, and then brushing them one at a time, as I said going around each surface of your tooth. That is the desired way. You don't have to use a lot of toothpaste when you brush. I know the commercials on TV would let, have you use uh, just tons and tons of toothpaste, but a little bit of toothpaste will go a long way. Um, and then when you hold your floss, just make sure you're wrapping the floss around the neck of each tooth and gently guiding it underneath the gum line and then rubbing up and down to, to kind of scrub the wall of your tooth under that gum. Um, that is the preferred method. That's how we teach our patients to, to floss their teeth. Um, the, the key to that is wrapping the floss on the middle finger rather than on your index finger. If you wrap the floss on your index finger and try to put it in your, in your, in your mouth, then uh, that's the way it's going to seem. You're, it's going to seem like you can't get the floss where it needs to be, especially in your back teeth. It's okay for the front teeth. And that's where we see most of the problems is the back teeth because people just will not go through the exercise to, uh, to learn how to floss properly. But it can be done. I'm a prime example of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, my parents didn't encourage us to, to floss our teeth when I was young. And it wasn't until I was in dental school that I learned to floss my teeth properly. And so I was, you know, well advanced in age and and uh, after a week or so of, of just deciding I'm going to do it, I learned how to do it properly, and now I can floss really easily, and it only takes, you know, 30, 40 seconds to do it correctly and thoroughly and get my entire mouth. So it can be done. Uh, it does take a little bit of effort. Um, again, the most encouraging thing I can say is start by wrapping the floss on your middle fingers, and then use your thumb and your index finger to guide it into place. All right. Now, um, maybe you said it, uh, but I don't remember anymore. Uh, hard brush, soft brush, electric brush. Can we touch on that? Yeah, I mentioned it should be a should it be a soft brush, a uh, soft bristle brush. And most of the electric brushes that you buy will have soft bristles. And electric brushes are good. <coughs> Excuse me. Electric brushes are very good, and they can be uh, they can be used. Um, I think that manual brushes are okay too. Electric brushes, there's a variety of them on the market. Um, but again, hold those electric brushes on your teeth one at a time. Don't try to scrub your teeth with an electric brush or even with a manual brush. Don't try to scrub your teeth. It's small, little, um, almost a wiggle or a jiggle stroke instead of a scrubbing of your teeth uh, when you're brushing with a manual toothbrush. Great. And what do uh, mouthwashes do to us? I mean, um, and, and, uh, and uh, are there, uh, whatever they do, you will tell us, are there any better ones than other ones out there? 
Well, mouthwash should be used for the function uh, to which they're designed. And uh, for some people, they might need an extra fluoride in their in their mouthwash. For some people, they might need a bacterial control. So depending on your needs, the, the kind of uh, mouthwash is what you should use. <clears throat> Studies have showed... Do you need some that, water, Doctor? Do you need, do you need some water? Yeah, do you mind if I grab it? Grab no, a drink no, 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 no. Thank you, excuse me. Um, studies have shown that uh, chlorine dioxide, as in oxifresh, and there's several others, that have a much longer lasting effect on curing mouth odor, for instance. Um, sometimes Is the, that what they're for? I mean, you said, you, you, you said that, you know, it depends what, the, you know, the, what they're designed for, but what are they designed for? What, what, well, is, what, is, the, what is the basic mouth, mouthwash designed for? Well... Certainly the advertisers would have you believe that if we can give you a mouthwash that has antibiotic effect, that we can kill some of the bacteria that are causing gum disease and causing cavities. Um, the reality is, is that the mouthwash does not um, really kill the bacteria that's under your gum line very much. So... The brushing and flossing is going to take care of the bacteria that's on the surface of your teeth, and the flossing will get underneath your gum line, but the mouthwash won't do that. So if somebody, for instance, has a, a potential, more of a potential for gum disease and sensitive gum areas, they may need a mouthwash that's rich in fluoride. And so a, a mouthwash that, that is like an act, for instance, can deliver more fluoride, which we know makes the, the enamel and the root structure stronger and more resistant to, um, to decay and to sensitivity. Otherwise, people who have adequate levels of gum, they don't suffer from, from gum or bone disease, but they might have a mouth odor problem. Therefore, a chlorine dioxide mouthwash might be the mouthwash that's right for them. So it just really depends on, I don't know that there is one that is the answer for everybody, although I think that the companies who advertise think they probably have the one, uh, but I do believe it's individual and it's something that you should discuss with your dentist. And that's something that we do all the time with our patients. All right, one more question. Uh, about, uh, oh, it's, it's now 15 or 16 years ago, I lived for a couple of years in India, in Bombay, India. And that's where I noticed that almost everybody uh, is using a tongue scraper, something I have not even seen before that, never heard of it, um, and, and all that stuff. Now, I started then using one, and uh, it, it kind of, you know, felt like it, 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 you know, like a little bit refreshing. In any case, I don't use one anymore today, um, but I do brush my tongue with my toothbrush. Yeah. Now, frankly, I right. kind of uh, gag uh, on it uh, every time I do it, but um, it's almost I'm looking forward to it. It's my morning thrill, you know. <laughs> so, I, in any case, what do you think about uh, a, a tongue a scraper or brushing the tongue? O overall, is it something we could, should do, or use less, or what's the deal on it? Absolutely, we should brush our tongue. The, our, the tongue is shaped much like very small little stalks of broccoli. We all see broccoli in the store before it's cooked. Don't and tell it's got me that. I mean, several, can you, don't you have something else to compare it with rather than broccoli? I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, I know most people don't like. I happen to like broccoli. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's okay. But yes, we should brush our tongue and just scrape the bacteria that will embed itself into the small little crevices of our tongue is a very, very good thing. And yes, you should do that every day. Even if it gags you a little bit, I gag too, but I brush my tongue every time I brush my teeth. All right. And the difference between a tongue scraper and a brush, no big deal, whatever, whatever, whatever the person likes, whatever he likes uh, more? I, I think it would be personal preference, yes. Probably the tongue scraper would be a thinner, so you might be able to get back a little farther before you have, feel that you have the gag reflex. Um, but yes, whatever a patient uses, it's very, very recommended to, to do something to your tongue. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Dr. Jones. Thank you. My pleasure.